Hey, what's up? I got some more lore content for you guys. This week I'll be covering three more very strong decks to pick up and play before the patch hits next week. These decks keep popping up out of nowhere and taking the meta by storm for a few days and offer much more variety to the game overall. Trust me, you don't want to miss out. That way you have a good understanding of what's strong, whether you want to play the best decks themselves or if you want to know how to counter them. Let's see what these strong decks are, shall we? Welcome to Meta Report. And starting us off, we have a cult classic being Scouts. Coming in with a win rate of 57.48% and a play rate of 3.55%, it is doing really well right now. Its best matchups include Ari Kennen, Timo Kate, Janna Targon, and also Bar Janna. Its worst matchups include Nasa Senna, Galio Udir, Zombie Ash, and Garen Jarvan Elites with Sharima. So much like Ash LeBanc, which I've covered recently, this is another cult classic. Old time players and returning players will be very excited to see that scouts are indeed very very good right now. There are two main ways to win with this deck. One is going wide, playing a bunch of dudes like Mirai Warden, and then also the Island Navigator, getting pressure like that, and then using Vanguard Sergeant to play for Demacia, or using Champion Strength in the mid to late game. The second way to win is to develop champions and play around them and getting their level ups. Using Misfortune and Quinn and also scout units being able to attack multiple times a turn and protecting the champions with form up and things like that in order to get infinite pressure later. So we have Chain Vest for protection, give an ally tough permanently. This is really good against all the P and Z removal where it just deals X amount of damage. Well, if the opponent taps out by doing this, you can use Chain Vest to grant your ally tough and outplay the damage spell. Wait for the tracker coming in early 1 mana 2 1. When you summon another ally, grant me challenger. We're going to be doing that a lot because this deck has a lot of early game units, so getting tracker down and then using him to contest the board, deal with early champions, stuff like that, super nice. Next we have triple shell shocker, 1 mana 2 1, a tune. Basically pays for itself as an aggressive unit. Uh, also, like the attune is just really nice, that way we can float and then use our chain vest mana or go into cleaner form ups and stuff like that later super good form up classic demacia combat trick we need this two mana burst speed give an ally 2 2 really good for trades really good for protection and next we have mirai warden two mana 2 1 when i'm summoned summon a random one cost follower it's nice to get that extra dude especially since we want to go wide play a bunch of dudes over the course of the game if we open multiple wardens and like multiple island navigators i mean that's just so much pressure right then and there that we can use uh, and buff up with the champion strength and stuff so Mariah Warden really good for swarming essentially. I just like Broadwing another good early game unit to contest the board really strong card gains challenger once you summon another ally just like Fleet Feather Tracker and you can use this to trade up into things. Two blocking Badger Bear really good body and also can block elusives there's a lot of elusive strategies in the meta so can't go wrong having a couple of Badger Bears in here. New Mage Seeker Jr. Yes, this card can hurt us by making the Chain Vest and also the Form Up cost more, but for the most part, the Mage Seeker Jr. is going to hurt our opponent strategies much more than ours, uh, especially things like Jananila. Really, really gets outplayed by Mage Seeker Jr. and other spellcasting strategies as well. Anything like Seraphine related will also get hit by this guy, so just sitting on him early, not really caring about your spells being increased, or if you don't even have spells in your hand, then Junior just comes down and provides so much more value for you, um, while also hurting the opponent, so really nice. Next we have our first champion, Misfortune, 3-3-3, three, three, three. when allies attack, deal 1 to all battling enemies and the enemy Nexus. So a scout will be able to attack multiple times a turn, so that's really nice. Only two attack turns are required for Misfortune to level. Uh, it's not like super common to get Misfortune level, it can happen in a lot of game states, but you shouldn't be solely focused on going for Misfortune level. Uh, nowadays because she's kind of easy to remove there's a lot of strong pnz spells there's also vengeance you know and stuff like that from shadow walls just killing her so in games that you can get misfortune level that's fantastic it's basically a luxury but for the most part don't tunnel on the misfortune level all right make sure you save your resources and figure out which way you're going to win if it's going to be through misfortune or if it's going to be oh just like saving your mana going wide and playing your champion strength right make sure you can differentiate in the game states which way you're trying to win but misfortune is a really good one to play around 
if the cards line up and you have enough protection for her to get her developed and attack multiple times with allies. She has Overwhelm on her level up form, which is really nice. On her level 1, she deals 1 damage to battling enemies and the enemy nexus. When she's leveled, she does 3 to battling enemies and also the enemy nexus, being a really good finisher card. Next we have Vanguard Sergeant, when I'm summoned create a 4 Demacia. For the most part we're going to use this when we are already developed, summon a bunch of dudes, for Demacia is going to create a really big board for the opponent to deal with, they have to block or take a bunch of damage, and then you just follow up and beat them down again, which is really awesome, using like champion strength in the following turn. So yeah, Vanguard Sergeant, really good body, and also for Demacia, very good spell for how many units we're spitting out with this deck. Speaking of spitting out units, uh, we have Island Navigator, Scout, 4 mana 2-4. Scout says, the first time only Scout units attack each round, ready your attack, meaning you can attack again. So you want to do something like Misfortune on Defense 3, then you go into Attack Turn 4, play Island Navigator, do your Scout attack by just attacking with Navigator and also your 1 cost follower, and then you can attack again even with Misfortune on your second one. So that's really nice, that's also 2 points for Misfortune, you only need to do 1 more Scout attack, and you level her. Or also Quinn, you know, uh, which we'll talk about here in a second. So Island Navigator, really good at being a defensive body, 4-2-4, allowing her to attack and survive any like early removal. And also getting a one cost follower that also has scout. Bonus points if you can hit like an elusive with this. That's really tilting for the opponent. Like if you hit Acorn, I'm pretty sure the opponent just FFs because then your Acorn is going to discount uh, your champion strength and stuff like that. And it gets kind of disgusting. There's a lot of really good one drops to hit in this game. So Island Navigator, gonna roll pretty well for you. And also give it scout, which is super nice. Next we have our other champion, Quinn. 5 minute 3 5, also scout. And when I'm summoned, summon Valor. Valor is also a scout unit that has a challenger, so you can manipulate the attacks, try to swing into something. Pretty cool card. Really nice as well if you want to attack with a scout, but you don't want to commit your Quinn in case Quinn might die. You can just do your scout attack with Valor and then give her a level up point and also maybe help level up Misfortune if she's already on the board, which is super sick. But yeah, she has the same exact level up condition as Misfortune. So as long as you're satisfying one, you're satisfying them both, which sounds a bit weird, but hey, it is what it is. When she's leveled, every time she attacks, she also summons a free Valor, challenging the strongest enemy. So, really nice as well. Really good attack pressure on a slightly stronger body. 5-4-6. Next, we have Scrutinizing Sergeant. 5 minute 3-3. Three, three, play. Pick a unit from the top 5 cards of your deck that cost 3 or less. Summon it and place the rest in your deck. This is really good. There's a lot of good targets for this. We can hit Misfortune just straight out the gate. Or we can hit something like Blocking Badger Bear. We can hit Broadwing. Or we can hit Mariah Warden. What's really nice is that Mariah Warden has an on summon effect. Not on play. Which means if... Mariah Warden is pulled from deck, you'll get the free one drop as well. So just overall, a lot of good targets on a 5 mana 3-3 body. Again, hitting Misfortune's a bit of a high roll. That's something you absolutely love to see and really good at just like basically drawing a card and playing it for you immediately. It's just like premium. Really nice. Next, we have Double Genevieve, one of our uh, mid-game win cons, 6 mana 5-4, Challenger, and Scout, same keywords as Valor. When I'm summoned, give other allies 1-1 one, one this round. Since we are spitting out lots of allies, obviously we're going to hit quite a few of them, so this is just generally going to be really good buff, probably plus 4, plus 4, or plus 5, plus 5 to your board if you're on a full board, and then Genevieve can, you know, grab something, and then you can attack again with everything else, and just basically beat over the board while applying tons of attack pressure. And rounding us out, what is a go-wide Demacia strategy without champion strength? 8 mana slow speed spell, give allies 4-4 four, four, and rally. Really good after you open attack, or you can do it on defense, and then you can scout attack and then attack again. Yes, that works. Champion strength is really strong in this deck when you're using it on defense turn, because if you attack with any scout, you're basically cheating the attack token, I call it, and allowing yourself to attack twice on your opponent's turn, which is not balanced. It doesn't sound fair, and that's because it's not. So yeah, champion strength really, really strong now that it has been um, reverted to eight mana, you know, and now it's just kind of good with scouts. So it's a little bit cheaper. You can play Shell Shocker in the early game to 
keep spell mana going for this so you can play it earlier. Again, if you do a magical high roll and hit Acorn with Island Navigator, then you can make Champion Strength cheaper as well, and then your opponent's going to Alt F4 and not play the video game anymore, so that's also pretty cool to do. So yeah, really, really strong finisher card, especially if you just have like three or four units. God forbid you have five or six and resolve this, you just automatically win if the opponent has no response. No Ruination, no Buried in Ice, hey, you're good to go. And that wraps it up for the deck rundown. Now here's a live commentary game so you can see how it plays out. I'll be giving context to why I'm playing certain cards and hopefully it gives you a good feel on how to play the deck. And for the example game, we're going to be fighting Misfortune Darius Aggro. Aggro is actually a really interesting matchup into us because we don't have any heals or anything like that, so burn sticks. But we do have a lot of early game units that we can use as blockers. As long as we play defensively, we can probably edge out. So let's keep Shell Shocker for sure. And we'll probably mulligan away the Scrutinizing Sergeant, probably the Quinn even since we're attacking on evens. If we're attacking on odds, I'd want to keep Quinn on attack 5, but she's not very useful on attack 6 versus uh, aggro burn. And we can also probably mulligan the Sergeant, just try to really maximize our 1s and 2s, which we did not do. We drew 2 of our champion strength. So, this is now a bit awkward. Now we have to pray our next 2 or 3 top decks salvage this hand. <laughs> because I did not roll very well on the mulligan. But we are going to go into Shell Shocker on turn 1, which we can use to block something like Legion Saboteur and not feel too bad. Alright, there's Broadwing, that helps a lot. Now we can just curve 1, 2. And we also have Chain Vest for protection. Shell Shocker. Uh, low key, this is going to be a Chain Vest. Uh huh, so I thought. If uh, Corsair attacked, I was just going to Chain Vest. Okay, see, our hand's fine now. We salvage. No problem. We're going to swing with Broadwing, try to threaten their turn 2 play. Or I warden. Fearsome unit. A little bit annoying. Um, I am down to threaten this, though. We're going to save our Shell Shocker as a blocker. That gave us the fearsome unit. Nice. I actually was not able to even deal with that, so... That is something I will be okay with. We're going to develop Misfortune, and then, ooh, we could actually play Broadwing this turn, Misfortune next. That way we have double challenger. Harley, chain vest. Nice and easy, you are not resolving that Parley at me. I want to do Broadwing on defense turn, and then Misfortune on attack, actually. What is this? It can't be Make It Rain. Because Make It Rain is, you know, yeah. Okay, so they're showing us Make It Rain, that's probably what that is. So let's play the Broadwing. That way we have double challengers, we can use Misfortune to swing into the 1 HP units with the broad wings, and that's going to be nice. Um, we can also do this for a value trade. Happy about that. Our unit lives, theirs dies. We're only taking one. Alright, Misfortune time. Bop. Ah. No prey. Ooh, yeah, there's the Make It Rain. Pretty unlucky targets. So let's go ahead and do 0 1, 1 1, 0 1, 3 2. Misfortune Passive is going to trade this. Um, and we're kind of just good to go, unless they're on second Make It Rain. Nice. Absolutely gorgeous trades. Enhanced Butcher, that's pretty nice. And Enhanced Elegant Edge, alright. They did get a pretty aggressive start. Uh, okay. Sergeant, and then go into champion strength. Look at that. So we can play Sergeant on defense 5. I'm probably just going to take this, to be honest, and try to win next turn. And then we float 2 going into next turn. Uh, this is a full board if I do the Warden. Look at that. Alright, they have a big board too. Okay. Holy! I see, I see. But! Champion Strength. There's no reason to open attack first. Their stats are actually really good. So, we're just going to leave Champion Strength completely beat over this board. I don't have a scout, which is a bit unfortunate. But it is what it is. 4-5. What's their most value over here? Probably the 3-3. Three, three. The and then just send everything. One card win con, baby. Champion strength. No yep. They have to give me everything, and then they're on one card. Even if it's Darius, he's not leveled. And I'm just in a good spot. Oh, 
Oh yeah. Genevieve, hello. Yeah, it's pretty much over from that point. As soon as I resolved champion strength, the game was won. And the next deck I have for you is another classic. This deck's been here for a little while. This is Barrier Boys featuring Shen and Jarvin coming in with a win rate of 55.44 and a play rate of 2.14. Hey, it's actually a really good deck if you want to pick this one up. Its best matchups are Quinvain Aatrox, Galio Voli, Timo Sedge, and Garen Jarvan Elites. Its worst matchups are a lot of Shadow Isles, Heimer Nora, Vagar Senna, Zombie Ash, and then also Karma Set because it's cringe. Much like any other Demacia build em up and beat em down decks, Barrier Boys follows pretty much a similar pattern. It wants to build a board, get a bunch of dudes down, protect them with the combat tricks, and then also use strike spells to control the board and just win through combats. So we have Fleet Feather Tracker coming in again, 1 mana 2 1. Really nice because it contests early uh, units, early champions. We can also protect Tracker with Barrier and stuff in the mid game and use him uh, later on. Next, we have one of the strongest cards in the deck uh, 1 mana 1 2. Green Glade Caretaker. When an ally gets barrier, grant me 2-0. This does not stop. This just stacks forever. So this thing will go up to like a 9-2 on average. And it's really scary. And you have to deal with it. And it's getting barrier. And it keeps getting stronger off of its own barrier. And Shen gets some of the barrier. So it gets stronger. And yes, this thing is really annoying. And every single time that it gets barrier, it says nature blesses her followers. And it's just over and over and over. And you're going to hear this like 13 times a game, whether you're playing it or playing against it. So really strong one drop, really good to hard mulligan for and develop and protect. Next, we have Bright Steel Protector, 2 mana, 2 1 play. Give an ally barrier this round. What's really nice is we have the classic defense turn 1 tracker, attack 2 Bright Steel Protector, kill a 1 or 2 drop. Hey, really cool. Uh, it's been a while since we've seen the Protector and Tracker combo since Protector got nerfed a while back, but it's also really good to do like Caretaker into Protector. Really good 1 2 as well. So, really strong early game, gets the pressure going right away, basically get the ball rolling. Triple form up, again, really good protection, really good damage. Hinku Student, 2 mana 3 1. When another ally gets barrier, give me barrier this round if I don't have it. So you can start double dipping on the barrier. Again, really good for attack turns, really good for defense turns. Barrier is a really strong keyword. Um, basically, it says negate the next damage the, this unit would take, and it lasts a round. So you have to keep applying it each and every round. But that's actually a good thing since Kinku Student can keep getting it, and the. Uh, Green Glade Caretaker can keep getting buffs, so that's really nice, and also protects from spell damage too. The only thing it doesn't protect is like kill spells, like Shadow Isles. That's why we saw a lot of Shadow Isles decks being good counters for Barrier Boys. If you want to beat this deck, hey, just play Quietus, just play Soul Harvest, just play Vengeance. Barriers can't really do much about that unless they run Nopify and Deny, uh, which this list is not running, but you can fit it. So yeah, King of Student, really good at double dipping on the barrier value. Petrocyte Broadwing, again, really good early game unit. We want to control the board. We can barrier this and keep it alive. Uh, single Combat, also really good for controlling the board. We can use Single Combat on our ally that has barrier. That takes it off, but it also still deals the damage to the enemy. So we can get some very one-sided Single Combats off, and that's really good at killing early and mid-game champions. Triple blocking Badger Bear, really good body, really good to protect with barrier, and also blocks elusives. What more can you want? Just do everything. Love that. Next we have Moral Support, 4 mana burst speed spell. I cost 2 less if you've supported an ally this game, give an ally barrier this round. So the only support that we have is Shen himself, you want to get Shen down and attack. If he supports something, then you have 2 mana Moral Support for the rest of the game. Really nice. Uh, because that's just like really cheap barrier. The opponent's not going to play around that all the time. And if they mess up once, they do like one bad combat, you can take advantage of that. And I think that's a really cool aspect of this deck in general. It very much takes advantage of like slight misplays or slight misinformed plays. If the opponent doesn't know everything that you have in your hand or everything you're capable of, you can just run away with the game based off of that one decision the opponent makes. So really cool. You get a strong snowball -y effect. And 2 mana moral support is pretty hard to play around, so very good card. Next we have Shen, 4 mana 3-5, summons uh, with barrier, he just gets it for free. And support, give my supported ally barrier this round. Support says you put Shen on the left during the attack stack, and put something else next to him on the right, that will gain the effect. 
So boom, they get the barrier from him. Really cool. Level up. I've seen allies gain barrier five times. This includes himself, so he only needs to see four others. If you have some Kinku students on the board, then they're going to be gaining barrier. So he's just going to turbo level. And then whenever he gives an ally barrier or if they get barrier from any source, they get plus three attack that round. So really good for defense, really good for attack pressure. And his champion spell is really good as well. You can swap two allies and also give them both barrier. So if you're on multiple Shens, you turbo level him. Really good, just all around card. Shen is really, 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 really strong. If you play him right on turn four, he's good on attack four. He's good on defense four. So yeah, he kind of falls off a bit later. Like if you're trying to play him 7A, I mean, he's ne nowhere near as good if that's your first Shen. You want to hard mulligan for Shen, get him right away because he's so important to play on four. This deck basically like lives or dies by Shen on four. So keep that in mind. Next, we have Triple Spirits Refuge, really good into aggro burn decks, 4 mana burst speed spell, give an ally barrier and lifesteal this round, just really good for 4 mana, barrier and lifesteal. Screeching Dragon, 5 mana 4, 5, a challenger, Fury, really good to play after Shen, like let's say you play Shen on defense 4, you go Screeching Dragon on attack 5, you can attack with both, Shen will give the dragon barrier, allowing you to contest the board, get ahead, and get your Fury proc, allowing the dragon to grow and get stronger. Next we have Triple Jarvan, when you attack, pay my cost, so you pay 6 mana, and it summons Jarvan from hand, attacking the uh, strongest enemy, he has barrier as well. Uh, he'll probably come out leveled because we do a lot of combat, the enemies have to block us, we survive the, the strikes because we have barrier, and then Jarvan's just going to be like a late game win con for us, lots of pressure, always gaining barrier, getting the plus 3 attack from Shen level 2, uh, Cataclysm all over the place, contesting the board, taking out whatever he needs. And you basically just uh, keep going, keep getting ahead. And rounding us out, we have Sacred Protector, 7 mana, 8, 6. Give an ally barrier this round, draw Shen. So it is Shen Boat. You can get him into your hand later on in the game, which is really nice, especially if your first Shen dies and he was already leveled. Then boom, you can get a leveled Shen later. That's really good. Uh, allies with barrier have double attack, meaning even if like your four attack unit is not being blocked, it's going to deal eight to the enemy nexus. So the opponents basically have to go very far behind, blocking as much as they can without dying. So Sacred Protector really good at just getting ahead because of that and basically winning the game. This card's really, really strong later as long as you can get value from the combat. And that's it for this deck rundown. Now here's a live commentary game so you can see how it plays out. And for the example game, we have our worst possible matchup, Nasus Senna. But well, we do have Caretaker on one, Shen on four, Badger Bear three single. Yo, our hand is kind of nice. One, two, three, four. Since I know how to count, I'm going to keep this hand. I can count the four. Oh, and double Caretaker. If there's any hand that can win through this terrible matchup, it's this one. Okay, they're already not quiet to sing me, so I'm kind of happy. Quietus, Soul Harvest, Vengeance, all really annoying into us. We're on double champions as well. There's the Soul Harvest, that's fine. That was off the top, which means they still don't have an out. So we can play this one and then play Badger Bear on three. Attack with Bear. Okay, double Jarvan. Not, not the biggest fan of double Jarvan. Acquisitioner. That's probably keyword. Because they know we don't run a landmark weapon, they probably don't need to heal, so they're just going to turn off barrier at some point. 8 spike, alright. So both of our caretakers are dead. And they hit elusive, which I mean, a bit annoying. Spirit's Refuge, alright. Pass? I mean, I'm down to pass as well and just play Shen on 5. Drat. Should have played Shen, didn't know I had Screeching Dragon off the top. Quite alright though. I'm always happy taking their turn away from them too. See if we get something like Vengeance right now. Um, ideally for me, they play Senna. And we can do some uh, some pressure here. Nice. She has five. But we can get this down. A little bit of pressure in there. Alright. Can't, we can't single, but that's alright. <laughs> Elusive Senna is kind of really annoying now that I think about it. 
But she can cast that. I mean, I have the blocking badger bear, which is funny. Not sure how much I want to use the spirit refuge though. Ready to fire. Right. Darkness and light. Yeah, sounds good. Concentrated forgiveness. And tracker. Kai. All right. And then we're gonna play screeching. And then we're going to open attack, allowing Jarvan to grab Senna. Soul harvest. A bit cringe. A bit cringe, I would say. I'm gonna hold my uh, Jarvan. Single combat though, because I think they're gonna vengeance my Jarvan, and then I'll be able to single the Senna. So no problem there. Yeah, it's good to me. Double soul, soul harvest. Uh, got a hate spike. I can see why this is a bad matchup. It feels kind of annoying. Oh, disable challenger. Um, okay. So, two one, two one, or send. Darwin grabs Senna. If Vengeance, we single. No problem, right? It's kind of what we've been playing around. There's Vengeance, we single. Was that Vengeance off the top? Their top decks are a little insane. 4 HP. They're a little bit behind. They can't even just play Nasus here. They play Nasus, we barrier and block. Again, we just barrier and block. Oh, interesting though. Now that I'm realizing this, darkness is going to damage. All right. My shield is yours. I think we're still fine. I'm pretty sure we're good. Never mind, we ain't good. Yeah, we are. We're fine. Because, little fun fact here, Barrier prevents strike damage entirely. So Nasus just 8-4 for no reason. I heal, and he doesn't level. Two worlds, one balance. And we're going to let Jarvan swing into the Nasus. Rather than doing like this and pushing two more damage, I think since we have so much damage already, we could just let the Jarvan swing into the Nasus in case something weird happens. That way if they're able to stop our units, Jarvan will probably still kill the Nasus. And the last one I have is for you Gwen enthusiasts out there. If you've been looking for a Gwen deck to play, then look no further than Vain Gwen. Coming in with a win rate of 51.92% and a play rate of 1.89%, it's a little bit on the lower side compared to the other two decks, but also solid nonetheless. Its best matchups include Timo Caitlyn, Bully Bear Aurelian Soul, Janna Targon, and Nora Bard. Its worst matchups are Ash LeBanc, Barrier Boys, Viego Evelyn, and Ari Kennen. If you like playing and winning with your champions, then this deck is perfect for you. This basically just wants to set up early and invest in champion pressure later, using Vayne and Gwen together in conjunction to get multiple attacks and multiple scissoring in, which again sounds a bit weird, but just go with me. So Gwen will deal damage based on her attack later on, and Hallow is going to ramp her attack a lot allowing you to drain for like 6 damage and getting really strong finishes in, especially when you do Cataclysm and like cheat the attack and do multiple, then it gets a little out of hand. So to start us off we have triple Boisterous Host, 1 mana 2 1, Hallow, after I die for the rest of the game when allies attack, Hallow your first attacker giving it 1 0. This stacks, so if you have like 5 Hallow units die, that's plus 5 to your attackers later whenever you want to uh, swing with them. So yeah, really good early game units. Also, a power investment for later. And then we have double quietus, so we can use this for a little bit of a flexible game plan. If we have to play a bit defensive in a certain matchup, like let's say we're fighting aggro, we can use quietus to control the board, or we can use quietus to destroy a weapon in case we're fighting cultists, or Jack Zorn or something like that. So really nice, just flexible card. 
uh, double, cease a sentry, two mana, two, one. Nice to get down early, also cycle through the deck, use it as a little bit of attack pressure or blocking an opponent's unit while drawing a card. Super good value there. Triple form up, again, this is uh, made an appearance in all three of our decks today. Demacia combat trick, really good, plus two, plus two, very nice. Double Glimpse Beyond, in case something of ours is getting shot or removed, we can use Glimpse to turn it into draw instead, and that's really good at keeping the resources going. Double Hate Spike, very similar to Glimpse Beyond. We primarily use this defensively as a reaction to something, so if the opponent's going to shoot one of our dudes, we use Hate Spike to shoot one of their dudes instead. It's like an Uno Reverse card. Then we have Phantom Butler, 2 mana 3, 1, Fearsome, Hallow, pretty good in the early game to get some Fearsome damage in. Again, attack investment later. Super nice. Double Soul Harvest. Same thing as the Quietus. We can use this in certain matchups if we need to play a bit more defensive. Just add some flexibility to the deck, allowing you to kill early and sometimes even mid-game champions like Shen, like what happened to us last game. Cataclysm, 3 mana slow speed spell. An ally starts a free attack challenging an enemy. Now this is where the power of the deck comes in. Your Hallow will stay on your unit. So like, let's say for example, you attack with Gwen, she will ramp up plus six from Hallow, uh, deal her damage, maybe she levels, and then you can do Cataclysm and attack again, she'll get another plus six, which is absolutely disgusting. And then you can use Vein Tumble to attack with her again and get another plus six. So we're basically just using like one or two units to attack multiple times a turn. And this is where our win con is coming from. So Cataclysm is really, really good at that. Next, we have Double Miss Call, 3 mana fast speed spell. Revive a random ally that died this round. This is really good if the opponents use like Vengeance or some kind of like single target removal and they tap out or they get pretty low on mana. Then you can just revive your ally that got shot, you know, anything like that. So if your Gwen gets Vengeance and that's the only thing that's died, then you have a guaranteed Gwen resummon, which is really good for 3 mana. So yeah, just overall, really nice card when you can resolve it. Triple Opulent Foyer, 3 mana landmark. When I'm summoned, summon a Ghastly Band. It's an Ephemeral and also Hallow unit, so when it dies, you get the attack stack. Uh, round Star, if you have the attack token, summon another Ghastly Band. For the most part, you want to play this on Defense 3. That's the best time to play this. If your opponent does a development on their attack 3, you play Foyer, gives you an Ephemeral Blocker. They may not want to attack at all. Super good. And then, turn 4, you'll summon another Ghastly Band because it's your round start turn 4. You have the attack token, you play Gwen. Now you have a Ghastly Band, you have a Gwen. Really, really nice attack turn 4 pressure. Next we have Vayne, 3 mana 3-3, three, three. when I'm summoned or round start, create a tumble in hand, or if you have one, reduce its cost by one. I've seen you attack four times. Kind of like um, the scouts with Quinn and Misfortune, kind of same like level up condition. But yeah, tumble basically is just like Cataclysm where you start a free attack, however you don't challenge, you don't target, it just kind of like happens. But also you can equip your ally that you're targeting the tumble with a weapon from hand, which is kind of cool. We do run combat cooks, so we might be on weapons sometimes. If you can hit scout or overwhelm weapon, those are just the best. Because then you can like throw scout onto Gwen, have her attack multiple times a turn, which is again like our main win con. Or you can put overwhelm weapon on her and then just turn her damage into direct damage, right? With the piercing overwhelm, and that's kind of insane as well. When you are attacking multiple times and ramping your hallow. So really good little... uh little cheesy card here that we're getting from our vein and we're going to use this in all kinds of different ways to either get pressure on the board or go for lethals when she levels you basically just get more tumbles and they're free that's that's kind of it she's a very simple champion and next we have combat cook four mana two two when i'm summoned i improvise and forge me again we want to try to find scout weapon overwhelm weapon those are like the two best ones i guess like pot of pain is okay the uh spell mana one is okay but yeah that's what we're looking for with the cook and we have Gwen, attack when another ally gains power from Hallow, so do I. So you want to attack with something first, that way it gains Hallow, and then Gwen will double dip later on in the attack chain. She'll get it as well. Really cool. Um, and then she also drains two from the enemy Nexus immediately. So really nice against aggro matchups to get a little bit of a heal two going. And if you attack multiple times, you'll heal even more. She levels if she's dealt 10 damage. This resets. If uh, this one dies, you have to play a new one. This is unique per card, so you need to make one Gwen deal 10 plus damage. But when you do, you are very heavily rewarded. When another ally gains power from Hallow, so do I, same effect. But now she drains one from the enemy Nexus one time for every two power she has. So if she ramps up to like 10 because of like a plus six from Hallow, she will drain one for every two. So that's five. She drains five. Absolutely disgusting. This can get 
really out of control again if you're attacking multiple times a turn attack with gwen then do tumble then do cataclysm she's draining for like 20. you just won the game Ta -da. next we have eternal dancers in case your gwen dies six mana three six hallow attack revive and attacking ephemeral copy of the strongest dead ally other than eternal dancers with my power or less you just attack with dancer um she'll gain hallow then she'll summon back whatever your strongest ally is could be uh gwen could be vain whatever's in your grave It'll just depend, but if you hit Gwen, that's really nice because you get the drain as well. And double rekindler, again, to revive your champion, 7 mana 4-4. Four, four. Our champions are really, really important for our strategy, so that's why we have the uh, miss call. That's why we have the dancer. That's why we have the rekindler. We're trying to make sure our champions live and continue pressuring to win the game for us. 7 mana 4-4, four, four. when I'm summoned, revive the strongest dead ally champion. And that's it for this deck rundown. Now, here's a live commentary game so you can see how it plays out. And for this one, we have Viego Evelyn. I don't remember if this was a bad matchup for our deck or if it was bad for Barrier Boys, but uh, we have a really nice hand. One, two, three, four. I know how to count the four, so uh, I'm keeping this hand. It's just pretty good, especially since we have Vayne to give us the tumble and we have the weapon synergy to make tumble full value. Boisterous. We'll do Boisterous on one, Butler on two, attack with both. Nothing too crazy. This deck is pretty simple. I think for the most part it plays itself in the early mid game. It's just trying to figure out when to go for the lethal and when to invest in the multiple attacks is when the deck is going to be like the most complicated. Now we deal three because of Hallow. Thank you. Very nice. Iris. That is a bit annoying. I kind of don't want her here. Open attack. I mean, this could be Hate Spike. I really, really don't like Iris hitting me. And then them having uh, Evelyn Husk on turn four. Tough, huh? Tough Vein sounds kind of nice. Dami Mommy. All right. I guess they have the Husk anyways for the Evelyn. Uh Oh, Quietus. I guess I could Quietus right away. Yeah, no more Husk for you. No Evelyn on turn four. Punk. All right, and then we can vein or combat cook. I like the vein. Getting the tough on her is really nice. Hopefully, no soul harvest. We can attack as well. Gets the plus two from Hollow. Pushes extra damage. Humble discount by one. Love to see that. Form up. Cool. Let's do combat cook. And we'll grab overwhelm weapon. And we can do dancer and tumble. Sounds kind of gross next turn. Rumble? Alright. Not very nice, but I see how it is. Now we can't do the dancer tumble. Or can we? Bane's discounts on summon, right? When I'm summoned or round start. Ah, I guess we can then. Let's go, Dancer. Let's go. Oh, Lauren. She's already summoning Vayne from her base attack, so I don't need to do um, plus two on her. We can put, put plus two on the Overwhelm unit. Let's go, Tumble. Let's go. That seems incredibly balanced. Yep. We can put the overwhelm weapon on the eternal dancer as well. Okay, never mind. Man, why are they being so mean to me? I just want to play the game. They're not letting me play the way I want to. I have so many cool ideas and so many cool combos. They really do be uh, being mean to me though. Hydravine. Um, yeah, that's a bit annoying. Do the foyer. Uh huh. Right. Block the. Uh, I guess the three one. It's kind of fine. This thing's gonna die anyways. 
And then we can play the vein. Demons walk among us, masquerading as men. And then we can do the tumble. And that threatens the Hydra Vine, right? It should. Because it would kill them. Okay, this is kind of cheesy. This kind of feels like I'm playing Red Gwen. Wait a minute! We have Katarina at home! Well, that was pretty crazy, actually. I didn't even need Gwen to win the game. We just used Eternal Dancers as our third champion and just kind of like popped off with the Vein combo, so that's really cool. Also, extra shout out to the patrons on screen. Much love and thank you for supporting. So yeah, to wrap things up, there are plenty of returning decks to try now, uh, especially since the meta has completely shaken out. There's a lot of cool stuff to play. The new variety patch is next week, so make sure to grind with any of the decks I've covered recently in, in order to hit that next rank that you want before the patch happens and shake things up even more. This has been Meta Report. Thank you so much for watching and have a good one. Laters.